Hello, hello, everybody. We are going to be continuing our Ace Attorney Trilogy playthrough with... I do believe that it's called Justice for All. Oh. Uh, I do believe. Let's see. Because I... Yeah, we didn't save, so I think it'll be a new game under... Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Usually you'd be like, ah, select which game, but no, it's just like, new game for all of them. But yes. Justice for All. This is where we really enter into the range where I don't really have any idea of what happens. With the original Ace Attorney game, the first one, I knew a bit about it. Like, I knew that M. Miles Edgeworth was a guy that... Uh, I knew a few things, like the... If it was almost Christmas, it wasn't Christmas uh, that his mentor, Phoenix Wright's mentor, would die, Mia. And little, various little things like that. There, there was just a little bit of pop culture osmosis that I got, because the first one apparently is just so beloved and proliferated... Proliferated? I'm trying to think of that word. Proliferated. Through the consciousness of the internet circles I seem to run in. But uh, from this point forward, the only things that I kind of know about is, like, way off, I think, in the Apollo Justice games, which are, like, sequels to the Phoenix Wright games at some point. Phoenix Wright becomes, like, a bum or something. I know that there's a whip-wielding psycho lady who I think is a prosecutor. And also that there is a coffee-drinking, like, Cyclops-looking guy who has that kind of visor. Other than that, my knowledge on the future games is just, like, completely moot for the most part. But let us go and see what Justice for All has in store for me. The Lost Turnabout. All right. Play the Lost Turnabout? Sure. All right, classic. <sighs> uh, how did I get into this mess? I don't know. I don't even know what's going on, Phoenix. That's far enough. You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix Wright. That's probably just the wrong voice. Oh, no. <laughs> Almost! This is horrifying! Well, what have I done wrong?! I cannot allow you to go on like this! But, but I'm just a simple defense attorney! Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title! So this is where that move in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom comes from. <laughs> a nightmare! September 8th, 1908. 1908. 908. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. <laughs> hey, we actually get to see him. Normally, we don't actually see Phoenix unless it's like uh, in, in the courtroom or in the finale group picture stuff. So this is neat. What a nightmare. <laughs> And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. Ah, yes, because uh, only music can cause nightmares. <laughs> totally not the underlying thoughts that uh, live in your brain. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Huh, looks like they hung up. Ah, good. Finally. I finally found it. Who are you? What? Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. It's nothing personal, kid. So, did he try to murder us before... Uh, or did he just, like, bash us over a head with a fire extinguisher? A few minutes later, District Court def Defendant Lobby Number 1. That's, that's honestly kind of hilarious. Ouch, my head, it's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in here? Ooh, this is new music. 
I guess that makes sense that they would have no music for a new game, but uh, considering that it's reusing this, I didn't think about it. Also, is that the couch that we were laying on? Shouldn't these guys, the, I, I assume bailiffs, have seen what happened, lazy bums? Why, why do you have kazooie feathers on your breasts? Good morning! Ah! Uh, g good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Roger that. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? But wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I had done something wrong. But what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I'm okay. I'm sorry, but this is a very silly way to get a tutorial across, but at the same time utterly hilarious <laughs> Like I don't know maybe have a bit where he gets introduced to a new Maya replacement and he has to like describe things to her, but uh, well, I assume her it'd be, it'd be interesting if he had like a I don't know he has to describe the defendant way to, or defense attorney way to Miles Edgeworth. Life in my hands? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. N not guilty? Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright came to save the day. Hmm. Maybe it's my uh, timeline that's messed up because I did not pay attention to the months and days at all. And also, we don't even know what year it is, so I don't know how long it's been since the last case he took. If it's any, if it's anything like uh, Phoenix acted in the first game, where he basically went months between cases and not taking cases, like who knows? And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me, ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. I'm afraid to ask, but here it goes, so... This might sound bad, but uh... Who are you? What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his client, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just, well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm, yes, I'm. Who am I? I, why am I drawing a blank? <laughs> this is a hilarious start. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Hmm, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say that I'm a defense attorney. And that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. To be fair, Phoenix, if you actually had your... Memories, you would actually be pretty good. Ah, someone please tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? Oh, this is honestly hilarious. September 8th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number two. Hey, we're up against that guy again, so this will be super easy. Ooh, once again, a new track. Although this makes me wonder, are we going to have amnesia through the entire game or just for the tutorial? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Beard. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Now then, are you ready? Well, I guess so. I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a sec. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... 
The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I have. Mr. Peng, your opening statement, please. Oh, hey, they actually have uh, different numbered squares for each game. That's neat. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me. And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay. And who are you again? The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. You know, I wonder if there's ever been an Ace Attorney game that's just like, ha ha, screw you, player, hardest one, hardest case at the beginning of the game. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Let's see if I can remember uh, Gumshoe's voice. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know. You work under that detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. It happened at the park near the headquarters, Exposé Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. Yeah, because he's dusting the fingerprints. <laughs> Also, another new song. Ah, feels nice. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The landing beat his body up bad and snapped his neck. Harsh. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, yes. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirm the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well. The court accepts it into evidence. So I'm going to assume that I'm going to need that. Now then, I recall at yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, I guess. Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually, um, it's just nerves. Give me a sec. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. All right, sir, I'll help you through this. Thank you, Beard. You are a nice lady. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yep. Info about evidence and people involved in the case are all listed there, sir. You can look in the court record by pressing tab. Tab, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit-chat for later. S sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can find. What was it? Tab again? We have our attorney's badge. It's my all-important badge. It shows that I'm a defense attorney. Cell phone. Found in his pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. Dustin's autopsy report. Time of death, 9-6 at 6-2-8 p.m. Cause of death, broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. Glasses. Found under the victim's body. Pieces of a nearsighted lenses were found nearby. And then, of course, this. Hmm. Why does his finger look odd? Let me get... Did another person go, hee hee ho ho, I'm going to write the, uh, the, the name of the victim in the did 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 did. I don't know. That, that's the only reason why I could think that that finger would be out of place. And 
also, like, I don't know. There's just something odd about this photo. Why do we even have a photo? Wait, the clock! Uh... But I guess that could be when the, this photo was taken, but still. Why include a clock in this and specify the time if... Because it says at 6.28 p.m. But no matter which way you slice it, that's not the time on that clock. But again, the discrepancy between ta the time of taking the picture and stuff, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. All right, Mr. Wright, let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found under the victim's body? Glasses. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And held on to them as he fell. Hey! Why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing... Mm. Yes, these are my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the crime scene are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. <laughs> Your Honor, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more. And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Decisive evidence. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area, but he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. Yep. I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence in the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. Couldn't he die, like, instantly? Broken neck, like, even if... Like, if it was a broken neck enough to kill him, he wouldn't have been able to move even if he lived a bit long after the broken neck. Because I know some broken neck injuries do still allow movement and stuff, but a, a, a broken neck cause of death would not allow that. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. I knew it. When I saw that finger, I knew something was wrong. Why, this is... Yes, I can see her name is clearly written there. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo two. Except the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, but, but I already told you, those glasses are mine. And how do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy! I'm not guilty, sir! Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get, all, get in the witness's face. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm gonna lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does look sort of like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be all right. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. Let's have some fun and press. Um, about those glasses, do you have any proof that those belong to my client? The lenses are for nearsightedness and almost the same strength as hers. Even the frames look kind of like the ones she's wearing in her ID, pal. Hmm, what should I do now? I'd say continue pressing. Hold it! Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this! Uh, um... Do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Uh, um, uh... The dirt and the sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. So what you're saying, Detective... ...is that you have nothing that proves these glasses are my clients. Um, something like that. W what? I see. Hmm. So there is no proof. 
Wow, that was amazing! I could totally feel it down in my gut! Okay, I saw the... <laughs> I saw the... The court, like, uh, penalty bar come in and I got scared. <laughs> now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name of that of my client? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Hmm. It's got a point. Hey, hold on! Huh? Don't harm me. I know the picture says Maggie, but... Now that she mentioned it, something does feel kind of off about the picture. What is her name in the profiles? It's spelled wrong! That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence! So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. I better check the court record again. You can present profiles! Neat! I'm not sure if you could ever, like, do that just as a thing that you can present. Very interesting. Well, let's, uh, see. Objection! Hold it there! But what is it? I'm getting my memories back. What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched ready to take on my opponent. What a rush! Detective Gumshoe! You talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see, this is very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. W where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's uh, name is uh, Maggie Bur Beard. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Beard. Ah! It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie with an E-Y. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, 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 but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to not have known her name. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Yes, I am quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. But yeah, I don't remember ever having to present a, like, witness profile before. I think there were at times, like, in the final, like, bonus case. But th that was more of a, hey, pick the person rather than go into the court record to present a diddly day like that. Officer Prince and Officer Beard have been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, I mean Officer Beard, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had bought him over two months ago. I should know because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Could it have just been gossip and the thing that she got him was just a birthday present? 
Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. But yeah, I'm gonna say this before I forget. That moment of Wright going, I'm feeling this, that's a rush. That honestly felt real cool. Of course, we will save before doing anything, because you never know. You never know when the game might come out to eat you. Going out for about half a year. How do you know about this? Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Beard was a rookie at the time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. They got close, I think. Actually, I was supposed to go too, but uh, I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. If only I'd gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, well, uh, nothing, sir. Really. Anyway. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. Marriage? But wasn't the victim eight years older than her? What? You're saying a guy's gotta marry someone the same age as himself, pal? No, that's not what I meant at all. Detective Gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know. Uh, I think this fella has ways to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal! The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's... <laughs> hey, I got an achievement! Mind your own business, pal! I wonder why. Press Gumshoe about they were talking about marriage. Why was that an achievement? <laughs> That's amusing to me. The day of the incident? You mean September 6th? Yeah. The victim officer Prince had just gotten off duty at 5.30 that day. Well, let's see. Does it say his birthday? The victim officer Prince had just gotten off duty at 5.30pm that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. I remember when I was young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly time. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. Maggie, I mean Officer Beard, had gotten Officer Prince a present. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because uh, I'm her boss and I've got to watch out for my subordinates. But even what she was going to give a present, but even what, but even then, what she was, why was that written weirdly? But even what she was going to give as a present, I guess that's like, as her boss, you even knew that. Okay, okay, brain caught up eventually. Isn't that going a bit too far? Hey, pal, watch what you say. I know everything that happens under me, and if someone so much as scratches their... I really don't need to know that much. Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. I agree. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant, that should not be a point of discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a sec. Well, why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. I think the good detective is about done here. It was something they had bought over two months ago. Over two months ago? Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was... Oh, what was the birthday present? What, what was the birthday present? She got him a glove. A single glove? Why would she only give him one? Um, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. A baseball glove, hmm? Press further. Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago. Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a store that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then, what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? The glove was custom made? Yep, that's what I said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. <laughs> Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to this case. Yes, it would seem that there are, is little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to the case? I would say so. I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it's relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes, bluffing to the max. Now this is the Mr. Wright I know. I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it'd take. This is great. Pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I've used it to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Very well. If you are that convinced, then let's hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? 
Why didn't you say so earlier? Hurry and show the glove to the court. Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. Anyway, this is it here, sir. Huh. What is it about... catching gloves? That's a right-handed glove. I'm trying to think... Because I'm not into baseball, so I'm trying to think if the, like, orientation of the glove is important. Because if you, do you catch with the same glove that you, like, do you catch with the same hand that you throw with, is my question. Ah, well, well, I'm sure the answer will become obvious. It's, uh, rather yellow, isn't it? A birthday present from Maggie to the victim. It was custom made. Looks like bananas. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had the special order it, right? Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. What is the reason? Tell me the reason! I think this court has heard enough. It is clear that the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was this name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that was caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we could confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. I'm going to assume the glove is going to be important. Hmm, yes, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The baseball glove has to be a key there to the orientation of the hand that uh, was used. All right, first save, because paranoia, paranoia, everybody's coming to get me. We first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that was the victim's. So, in the end, you couldn't confirm it? Hey, don't look down on us! I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal! Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I've never heard that before. Me neither. Nor I. I never heard anything like that at the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up anyway. Next, we checked the finger's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. And what does that prove? Well, it proves that he did write the name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. There were also scratches on his skin that was caused by him writing on the ground. Scratches on his skin? Yep, you can't see them with the naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible! Sure is! That's the power of scientific investigation! They're so small that we had to use a magnifying glass, like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific sounding name. You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it. We used one of those and that's how we found them. You can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. From this we could f confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Are you absolutely sure? I believe in the power of science. Hmm, I wonder if my evidence is solid enough to counter with. Listening to this, you would think that there were only one conclusion. But the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange, sir? If Dustin really wrote that message with his right hand, do you think it w I would have go through that much trouble to get him a present? His present? A present? What about it? Yeah, they're pointing to, like, diddly D. I guess, present the baseball glove. Action. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Could you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Uh, never really thought about it, but uh, it's really yellow, and that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, that only, but that is only one of its qualities. Huh? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. This glove is made to be worn on the right hand. 
That is why it had to be custom made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Well, um, no. So, detective, which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious. From his picture, it was his... Wait a sec. Don't forget the victim was left-handed. Ah! Th this, that is, I mean, I object... Overruled. Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There is only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie, i.e., could not have been the victim. I love this. It has such a good vibe to it, man. Order! Order! When you think about it that way, then yes. It is not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. Then that means Maggie is... No! It's not possible! Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor? The evidence the prosecution has presented has failed to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! All right, you did it, Mr. Wright. <sighs> I feel like I can breathe again. It seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor. Uh, well, thank you, sir. So you, <laughs> see, you got complicated by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Beard. No, not yet! Yeah, because I, I was wondering for a moment, are we really going to end a case without convicting someone? I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? <laughs> and what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? You think that would be an important witness? Order. Order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterward, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling that was a bit too easy. I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned for recess. But I do like this uh, tutorial. It's much more in-depth. It's much more interesting and impactful. That's a nice jingle. I do think that it's kind of dumb as a plot device. I'm going to hit him over the head. <laughs> but at the same time, it's leading to a well-designed tutorial so far. September 8th, 1143 AM. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Amnesia? I can't believe my lawyer's trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little. A Maggie kick will be all you need. Uh, no, no, no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I can stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one problem you won't be tackling today. Well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. Nope, no, that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So my name is Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. Hmm, this is serious. I really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay. Some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Phoenix's business card added to the court record. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. So I'm going I'm guessing this is going to be important. 
this case. Yeah, can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Um, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with the cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up then and tell me! This might be very important! Okay, Roger! Oh, are we gonna get a flashback? It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. The day of the crime, just before 6 p.m., but he died at 6 whatever? <laughs> the blue badger! All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Um, okay, no, never mind. This is before 6 p.m., she's on her date with her beau. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. And that's when the killer heard her name. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Dustin and I waited for the person to show up, but they never did. Hmm. So where is this phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? You To me? Is that the phone in my pocket? You mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know, but if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were here all along! Oh, Maya! You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up! And when I went to check in the courtroom, everyone had already left! Ah! Now who the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And good morning to you too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra-decisive, super-important evidence. Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What the heck is this, a list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to dig up some dirt. It looks like these guys are up to no good. No good, as in? There's a group of con artists that the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Names list added to the court record. This is a very in-depth thing. Why would a group of con artists pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me. Hmm, and where did you get this list from the first place? What? Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday. Oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm. So that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. I hope I never get to be for a forgetful old prune like you. Um, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is... Mr. Wright, recess is over now. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oop, oops, guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. Wish us luck. Huh. I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not gonna lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Uh, yeah. Nice to see Maya again. 1154, District Court, number two. Remember to stay hydrated while you babble in hell. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. But before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things that rub people the wrong way, you see. So I asked if the court might be a little lenient on. There is no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls its next witness a drifter who is taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. Well, what's his name? Hey, it's the bastard man. Please state your name for the court, witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, all right, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk. D did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you've tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university student to get just the other he double himself, everything is life is up most for plus sorry. I merely look for a top unbeatable university, don't you see? I have a regular selection process in which I'm doing my walk. Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I will be more careful from now on. What is, what is he? A human chatterbox? Uh I have to question him. <laughs>
Well, animated hair flick. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. Oh. <laughs> Wish I could actually check these out, but oh well. Glasses? But you aren't wearing glasses. That's gonna be his undoing. That's enough, your name, witness. Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down. I see how you work. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. All right, I suppose I can tell you my name. I'm Richard Wellington, the drifter virtuoso with a PhD in drifting, as it were. If you wanted to, you could call me a university student in transit. <laughs> Mr. Wellington, on the day of the murder, you were taking a uh, strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word, if you must, then by all means. But I remind you that I'm in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify to this court what you saw during your walk through the park. See, you said it again, taking a walk. You know you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. But they're coming out swinging with this first case. I was at the park all afternoon, despite in thought, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Oh, of course I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was that banana that fell of the uh, police officer. Hmm, that was certainly a decisive testimony. Decisive? Nick, did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you have to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes. If she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find the truth no matter how well you craft your lies. What I saw that day. I do like the new music. I think I prefer the old music, but this one's still very nice. Well, let's talk about that then. So, you were at the park all afternoon. You seem to have a lot of free time. <laughs> that was very rude of you, but then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trashy university. No-name? No trashy? Now, this might be hard for a mush-headed, feeble-minded baboon like you, but I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. Well, I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please! Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country. That arrogant little snot... <laughs> I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool! I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. Uh, his arrogance is really intolerable. What do I do? Press harder. Answer the question! How did you know what time it was? Tisk tisk. I don't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. Hm, I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so that even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was this little thing called a clock at the park. Do you... did you get it? Do you know what a clock is? It's a thing that tells you the time. You can see, Mr. Wright. You can... as you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Oh, so it is. I looked at that clock, and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me, this whole concept of breaking time apart, totally done a nonsense to mention follow. First, <laughs> and yeah, and yet again, another flood of meaningless words. Talk about a first-class waste of time. In any case, I wonder if that clock will be important, or if that was just there to save you from pressing if you didn't want to. You're like, oh, because it's there. Hmm. I'm trying to imagine what a normal clock would be like. 
Granted, it's hard to tell which one is the hour hand and which one's the minute hand. And again, this could just be the picture taken. But at the same time, the police get there really fast, so who knows? We'll press on everything, and then if worse comes to worse, we'll do that. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above right in front of my eyes. And how did you know he was a police officer? You obviously have no idea how powerful my detective reasoning skills are. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. That shoddy to do it yourself hairstyle was always tired of these cheap quality shoes. Uh, and I was supposed to. Hear <laughs> oh, and I suppose it was also because he was wearing an officer's uniform. Shouldn't that statement have come first? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Hey, Nick, do you think he's uh, figured out what I do? Even I haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> Without a thought, I looked up up there and I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Wright. They use this eye to see things. In the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you! I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? That's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustained, Mr. Wright. Please refrain from raising your voice in this court. And please don't make me have to raise my voice. <laughs> Wright has a point. Are you finished? I'd like to continue if that's all right with you. Of course I remember her sweet face. It was the pretty defendant over there. So you're sure you're not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life of mine. I'm what you call a famous brand name product, while you are only a cheap imitation. There's no way someone as magnificent as myself could have a, made a mistake. Of course, of course. Oh, 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 of course. Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell for the police officer. The banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now, you, now what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Mackie never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's got to be lying about the bananas. Hmm. He could be, but there's no reason for him to lie there, about there being bananas at the crime scene. And what if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was another. And if he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, then that would be an inaccuracy. Think, Phoenix, think! If my client is innocent, then there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying... Yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right, she's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? Uh, kind of, sort of. Well, I guess we know exactly what to do is to present the bananas. Objection! I love that there's a small pause. <laughs> Mr. Wellington, I believe I have the bananas you saw right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why didn't you say so earlier? So he can't see because he doesn't have his glasses. But don't think you can use this as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you're wrong. M Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? Wh what? A baseball glove? Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? Th that's... That's not... It's... A no! Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness has bad eyesight. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh? How? What? Why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. No, I don't think so. Objection overruled. You, you, you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo. You're too used to the world to stabilize new possibilities. Sure, in the end, we find out that the glove, however, not bananas. When feel from afar, look them up, don't you? And that's why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. They're both 20, 200. I suppose you're going to tell me that's terrible, right? Why are you not wearing your glasses today, then? Uh, um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? <laughs> How about it, witness? 
You are an unrelenting evil man. You're like those people who rejected John of Arc. You show us brave, courageous, only to act out unrighteous people and watch you doing it. Grossly burnt. Which boils down to you are not wearing your glasses at the time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven by the same to be the same by this witness. <laughs> but the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm. Witness, please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. This guy, this guy's already breaking down. I love it. The girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 when I made the call. Well, I know exactly what I'm going to use. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up only within 10 minutes. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like mine can understand that. That girl is the murderer! You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Because I do believe that it's the time thing that's going to bite him, because... diddly dee. But first I'm going to press on everything leading up there. She ran away, just like that. Yes, she did. She saw me and flew the nest like the guilty bird she is. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that a pun too hard for someone who only got a third-rate education? Actually, that did take me a few seconds to get. Anyway, if she ran away the instant she saw you, how could you tell it was my client? <laughs> the witness has already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. This is true, Mr. Wright. I'm striking your question from the record. Hmm, how can I get more information out of him? After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. Fair. Well, let's see. Do you have a phone? Immediately, as in? As in immediately. I mean, sure, a minute might have elapsed before I did, but that's the duty of every good citizen, or did they not teach you that you, in your, at your pitiful school? You think people learn about how to call the police in college? Hey, Nick, I think you should take a look at the court record for a sec. About what? Uh, the autopsy? Yeah, 628. It must have been 640. Yeah, 645, that's way after. How do you know the time was? That detective told me. You know which one I mean. The one with the jacket that makes it look like a dropout from a no-name high school. Hey, pal, I graduated from a pretty good, I mean, top-ranked college. I don't believe this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I don't believe I was mistaken on what time I called. And if I'm wrong, then the detective obviously doesn't know how to tell time. What? Why you? Get just some lousy kid who... I think the court can see your point anyway. How did the police respond? Objection. I'm gonna do this. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you had called the police, it was already 6.45. There's clearly a 15-minute gap here. Do you deny it? Ah! I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15-minute gap. <laughs> the witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Ah! Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during this 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephone, uh, I mean, spit it out. I, I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions, as if you're trying to open all the layers of a Matryoshka doll. You must think you're really something special. Witness. I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it. 
Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone. You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first rate people are never allowed to lose things? Have you ever heard of geniuses but so rational? I should say everyone point on it. Don't you think simple plain people understand? Enough! Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Nick, that cell phone, could it be? I mean, this phone Maggie found? There's no way! Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Question further. Mr. Wellington, where is your cell phone right now? What are you getting all of excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my cell phone. I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he's got his phone. And I thought that just maybe this was his. Hmm. Well, then I think we've cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have his cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay this call, this call was caused by his search for this phone book. But I don't think so. Well, that's the gist of it. But first, phone book. I guess you could put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? There is something. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe that there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. All right, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. Take that. It's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. At the crime scene photo. Is there a problem with it? Oh, um, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic before looking at something, looking at it, something is wrong with you. No! It's, it's a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why did you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Oh. Mortar, order! What does the reporting of... Well, what does reporting the crime a little late prove for the defense? The witness can't explain what, is he, what he was doing for those 15 minutes. That is reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? Then I bet his phone really is his, Nick. He must have killed Dustin to get his phone back. But Mackie said that she was going to return it to him, so there was no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm, but if he wasn't looking for his cell phone, maybe he was looking for something else. Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any thoughts you would like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witnesses was doing for those 15 minutes? He was writing the name. There's only one possible explanation. All right, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, say, you will be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, I probably shouldn't have said that there was only one possibility. Please present to the court the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Perhaps. <laughs> that was just an idea I thought I'd throw out. No, I'm wrong there. Let's return. Okay, let's continue. Bup, bup. Why didn't he oh, call the police right away? He was writing the diddly dee, I think. Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Darn it, game. Because, by... because yeah, the phone one was probably a bit stupid, but I thought, hey, he was writing the hand in the sand. What was he doing? We don't have that much evidence anyway. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Names list? What is the evidence I need? Wait, I think I made... Hmm. 
One thing I might have noticed. Let me see again. Because I think Phoenix had a different pose when I gave the cell phone. Nope, I was wrong. Hmm. I'm losing my mind. Why didn't he call right away? Maybe glasses? Because... Uh, I gave everything else because I showed this one to be like, oh, because he was writing Maggie's name. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Glasses? Why, why would it be the glasses? Because I figured, like, out of all the information that we currently have, the reason why he wouldn't do it right away would be linked to the phone or the writing in the sand. But I guess glasses. Mr. Wellington! What? What? Don't do that! You must give me a heart attack! These are your glasses, aren't they? Ah, uh, where? Where did you find? Ah! I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. That these glasses are in fact yours. I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. <laughs> under the victim's body? Order! Order! Now, wait a second. Hold on. I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. When he didn't realize that they were under the victim's body, and that is why he took that 15 minutes to make that call. I guess that makes sense. But my brain didn't immediately jump to the glasses, but it does make sense. Man, I would have been penalized to hell. Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indict... In... In... Indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course. That is precisely what I'm doing. Ooh, this is funky. Oh, oh! I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out this cell phone is the key to this case after all. Anyway, now's our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah! This is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Murder! Murder! Your Honor, the defense, the defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I'm no criminal. This is the great fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you're not the murderer. Why, that's, that's easy. Um, uh, for example, there's a, the name of the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie, and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, 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 wouldn't that mean that the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how would the person know her name was Maggie or uh, Maggie? That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bride Beard before this trial. I forgot. Hmm. Is there any way this creep could have known beforehand? There was a way. It would be best if I could prove the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now would the defense please present its case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Phone! Well, Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone on you with you that day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you? How did you? Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there's some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Beard picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. 
Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. All right, um, I'm sorry. I, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned that her name was Maggie. Uh, um, uh. But you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name is Maggie, E-Y. But the name that was written on the ground was Maggie, I-E. This was a mistake that could only occur if you knew how her name sounded. Ah! Order! Order! But, Your Honor, the witness has no motive! And your point is? It's very simple, Your Honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, can you explain what motive this witness could have had? I like that it's just going and going and going. I love the flow of this. Aside from the one thing because of my brain, this is really good. It's very simple, Your Honor. Mm. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, then the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present the court the motive. A list of con artists with their phone numbers stored on a... F present! <laughs> Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You... you looked up all those numbers? Of course. This list of phone numbers is stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artists group. What? C con artists? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? This, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy! Looking up the phone numbers on a person's phone is a worse crime than murder! You're one of those people! You're some guys who rated, rated that brilliant honestly disruptive dialogue with the goddess! I don't care, Mr. Wellington. All I want is for you to tell us what this list is about. You think any of you know what it's like to be a refined man such as me? Your Honor, this, this is... this is unjustified badgering of the witness! Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the number of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is a member of that group. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All of your friend's phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill! No, this is too much! But he didn't, uh, super break down. That does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I got you now. I, I, that, I, that police officer. Your Honor! What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this is, this is unjustified battering of a witness! You said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. <laughs> please please let's think about the content of the phone. Phone call. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was miss meet Miss Beard to get his phone back. Why, then he would need to kill anyone. Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Ooh, that's... that's gonna be a rough one. Hmm, when you think about it logically, then it makes sense. Then maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit murder. Your thoughts, Mr. Wright? Hmm, well, I don't think Mr. Wellington went to pick up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he was promised his phone, so why would he have been unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that he didn't agree with? Was it the fucking baseball glove? Hmm. Cause he is easy to provoke. 
Could it have been that he was a police officer? Yeah, what if he was a police officer and he was just like, oh no. Nope. Oh wait. The witness saw this! Mr. Wellington, is he correct? <laughs> By his special note say, that's not it. Yeah, because I figured that if he was a... Oh, maybe I need to present the profile. That's maybe, maybe that's what I need to do. Present the profile. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The, the, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! The girl that picked up my phone is up with the policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would, would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check. And he went into a panic. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. <laughs> Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking. Hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... <laughs> <laughs> wow, he just went nuts. Uh, impressive. Not bad for a person with a third rate education. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence. Evidence! Uh, that guy is really creeping me out. All you've been talking waving around is about suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number. This is suspicious card on group that. They're all on that phone. Who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence! You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier! That phone I lost, I've already found it! You don't have even the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to! But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton! What?! <laughs> it feels so good to see you squirm! Hmm, we do seem to have a problem on, your, on our hands with this phone! Whose phone is it? Without knowing that it's meaningless as evidence! Your Honor, this is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm, the cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's got to be. Hmm, maybe... I, d I was going to say call my phone with that phone. The phone stored numbers? But let's see. There has to be something I've overlooked. Hmm... Fingerprints on the phone? I got it! We should check for fingerprints! Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on his phone. Nick, don't you remember? Oh, you wiped it off. Well, that's mean game. I what? You said there was sand all over it, so... Wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. <laughs> Darn. Uh, we, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see. Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched, because all the numbers just magically disappeared. Gotta be joking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence. Mr. Wellington, what's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are too much. And of course you have no idea what I'm talking about. He bashed me over the head. Uh, oh my god! Now I remember! Oh, thank you very much for the raid, Viper Games. I didn't even know I had that activated. <laughs> Thank you very much for the raid! Ah. Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it.
Right now, we are experiencing the tutorial case of Justice for All, Ace Attorney. It is so much better than the first case of, uh, the first case of Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. Sure, it was nice and fine, but this one, ooh, much more spicy. So that's when. What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we've worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's going to get off scot-free. I know. I know this one has to be his. But how am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright, if you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is, your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have a reservation at the ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You've had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let the guy go? Raise an objection. Please wait, Your Honor. <laughs> I love how everyone starts sweating the moment I do that again. All right, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness, is that clear, Mr. Wright? Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well, but this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this, and you cannot prove everything. It's over, for your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you're well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. I think I may know what it might be. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. My business card. Why, thank you. How nice. Here, please have one of mine. <laughs> Judge's business card. <laughs> they actually added it to the court record. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't the time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there is something very important about that card, and that is the back. This card is important because of what's on the back. Hmm? You wrote your cell phone number on the back, right? But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? But court is still in session. It's okay. You'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We're gonna call my cell phone right now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all these idiotic stupid things to... Hey, it's the Silver Samurai theme! Ah! What? Why is my phone? And where's the stupid sounding ringtone? Mr. Wellington. Hmm, how strange. I could almost swear that you're holding my phone. Your... Ah! No, 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 no! It can't! By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on the head this morning. I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one! Did he sing his ringtone? <laughs> this is a good game, honestly. I really liked the first one, so I'm very... Oh, Jesus Christ! Jesus. But yeah, I really enjoyed the first one, even if the bonus DS case was wonky as hell. I still enjoyed it. I still enjoyed it and kind of preferred it, like, almost as much as... 
I, I would rate the uh, Rise from the Ashes to kind of on the same level of enjoyment as Turnabout Sisters. Even though it has a bunch of negatives towards it, it also has a lot of cool stuff in it. So I really liked it. But this, this is a great introduction for the second game. <laughs> the amnesia plot's a little silly, but at the same time, the writing on this one was so much better than Mr. Sawit. <laughs> So that is what happened. You are knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He is a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. And in order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding... ...is Mr. Wellington's, naturally. Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Ah, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant Maggie Beard not guilty. Fantastic. That is all. This court is adjourned. That was fun. Kind of silly, but lots of fun. I like that it introduced a lot of things towards it. Like, it wasn't just, ah, you can present that. Also, we get to, in oh, wrong button. We get to present character profiles now as an active thing. I know that Rise from the Ashes did that a bit, I think, but only at certain things that were prompted. Here, it's just like, ah, you can actually present them. And that's super cool. It's, I, I am probably going to forget that mechanic and make a fool of myself in the future, but it's very fun. There's a lot of name jokes in this game, honestly. Yep. I, for, I forget. Oh, if I remember the little random factoid tidbit things that I read, that's all to blame because of Miss May and uh, Mr. Red White from the first game. Because once they got to, well, also Mr. Sawit, but I don't know how that played out in the Japanese version. But yeah, these games just love puns. Even though sometimes I like, I don't know what Wellington... Richard Wellington really means as a pun. Maybe it's just like, ah, oh, it's because he's not actually doing well. <laughs> I knew that the real you would shine through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Huh? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, how did you survive? I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied at a game of tic-tac-toe. My life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the Goddess of Misfortune. And then at the Academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? I think Richard Wellington could be rich and well. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> rich and well off. What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to be latch on to those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, oh, that's right. We were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand and, before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Oh. <laughs> well, what? I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I, I see. Everything is my fault. Dustin's death, your head being all messed up. Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. <laughs> I'm gonna find a new life for myself starting now. The next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Bad things are going to happen to those around you. You're gonna make a return, aren't you? Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet. I'm gonna make it, I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Yeah, that's the spirit. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. 
Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves, too. Ah, what a horrible day. I've gotten my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. Well, you're okay, and that's what counts. You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here it goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? <laughs> what? I thought you said you got your memory back! <laughs> that is hilarious. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. Detective Gumshoe. He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases, but he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge. He's a lovable, kind old man who is really easily swayed by people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. <laughs> this person. I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I like how it, it changed. It's like, oh, I thought I was important. He seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaking me for someone else. And this girl. Maya? You, you finally remembered. This is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right. So many unforgettable memories about her. For example, Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you've missed me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? <laughs> well, I'm back now. So it's time for us to create new memories together. All right. Sounds good. In fact, I just want to check and see. Will it note the time change? Hey, it has been a year. All right. Sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. Come on, Nick. Let's get to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back into my life. And that story... That story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. Are we gonna have a flashback case? The lost turnabout. Because he got smacked upside the head. Reunion and turnabout. Oh, great. It's an even younger Maya. <laughs> a brand new episode has been added. But yeah, that was a fantastic case. It stunned me a bit when it come when it came to the glasses bit because like sure, the glasses were found underneath the body, but how hard is it to be like, hmm, he grabbed it and then he fell, maybe he crushed them. And then again, maybe the guy was just an idiot. <laughs> he was an idiot. He took the wrong goddamn phone. <laughs> He's like, I'm gonna bash this lawyer over the head and take my phone back. And then he took the wrong phone. <laughs> but yeah, that was a fantastic tutorial case. Utterly grand. Much better than uh, the first turnabout, I think it was called. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the plan was good. The execution was awful. I don't even think the plan was that good because he panicked when he saw a police officer and his immediate reaction was, I'm gonna kill him! Woohoo! <laughs> Utter madman. Wait. Wait a moment. Hmm. Oh, it's because he was... I'm trying to think. I'm trying to piece things together because, actually, one thing does uh, boggle my mind a bit. Why would Maggie not have known? Because... If the dude saw, like, saw Maggie with a police officer, Dustin Prince, and then immediately killed him. Wouldn't that have meant that Maggie would have been there to see the murder happen? I guess maybe I misread it. It's entirely possible that... Hmm... Yeah, th that part doesn't make sense. You think she's gonna look behind her or look at her husband? And on the ground. But even then, he would have had to have been on the same level as them, run up and pushed him off, then gone down there unimpeded to search for his glasses. So, the only thing I can think of was... She got the phone call on the cell phone she found... And uh, said, oh, yeah, I'm Maggie. We can make a, th a time and pick it up. And 
then he saw her with a police officer, so he bided his time. He didn't show up, so she went to work because she had night shift, and then he pushed Dustin off the second level because he feared that the police officer might have uh, done a check on the phone, but because they only just got the phone, he was just like, aha, this is it. But then if he did a check on the phone, uh, maybe he would have had something on him. I don't know. This guy was kind of an idiot. Like they said, his involvement with the con artist group made him exceedingly paranoid. But at the end of the day, Maggie was not there to witness the murder, I think. He ran fast, I think. That's why the time difference was there. But he still had time. Well, no, they said that the time difference was caused by... Uh, because he pushed him. Then he went down there, searched for his glasses that Dustin grabbed as he fell. And that's why... Uh, or at least that's what Phoenix claims the 15 minutes was. So yeah, it's just very odd. Because again, he, he, there was a phone booth right there, and his excuse was, oh, I had to go find a phone booth, but when he was actually looking for his glasses. I don't know, that part of... <laughs> the presentation of the case was really good, that that thing of, wait, shouldn't have Maggie have been there then? They didn't really address that. Because I don't think I don't think Maggie said she witnessed it, and the only person who claimed that Maggie was there was the killer himself. So I think we can chalk that up to. Eh. But yeah, still, this was a very good case. That little logical thing, just me nitpicking. Because while during the case, I didn't ask that. This is just me overanalyzing it. This was a great case, honestly. I'm trying to think. Yeah, this is a really good case. Very nice. I do like... Uh, you think they're going to listen to the witness in court? <laughs> I think you mean... Uh, of Ace Attorney? That's true. <laughs> this is the world of Ace Attorney. We get to cross-examine parrots. Granted, that was part of Von Karma's plan a bit, but... Eh. Uh, defendant. That's also true. But even then... Uh, considering that just the very you'd think that the fact that he lost his glasses and the glasses like he had bad eyesight lost his glasses and the phone like that he would also be indicted a little bit on those grounds because this is the wacky world of Ace Attorney <laughs> but it's just like oh no we have to put a time pressure we can't actually use the three days we're given then again I don't know how many three how many days we were given before the memory smack so who knows <laughs> but in the end it was a very fun case just don't overthink it too much it's the wacky world of Ace Attorney <laughs> eat your hamburger Apollo <laughs> but yeah very fun. Once again, much better than the first turnabout. Sorry, Larry. But Mr. Sawit was very simple. I do like that you actually had to use pressing a bit for this. I wonder if you, like, uh, moved about, like, ended the cross-examination, quote-unquote. Somebody would have said, hey, maybe if you press them. Uh, but otherwise, like, yeah, I wonder if they designed this case to be accommodating to returning players as well as new ones. And again, I really like that they are making it so that you can present character profiles, because I don't think that was in the first game, except for those dedicated moments in Rise from the Ashes. Yeah, very good. But I think that will be it for now, because that ca uh, this was only supposed to be a short stream, and I thought, like, oh, we'll just go do the first one, the first case, and then maybe do the investigation of the second case, because I thought this was going to be the same, like, 30-minute trial thing that the first turnabout was. But no, it was an actual case, which is pleasant surprise. And very fun. I'm glad that I did this. I'm glad. I'm also glad they decided to port it to PC. It's a very fun time. But yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody. This first case of justice for all. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. An edited content YouTube channel called Neon Icy Wings. And then the stream as well as stream VOD container channel, Neon Icy Games on YouTube. And then if you prefer to watch on Twitch, I have twitch.tv slash neonicywings for all of that. 
And then, of course, the various other multitude, other deluge of social medias can be found in my link tree, which should be linked in the various descriptions, bios, and link areas of the various sites. Right? Whereas the actual URL should be linktr.ee slash neon icy wings. I always forget because Linktree has a we has a weird way of doing it, but eh. And the various sites that I post art to, like my uh, a little adorable monstrosity there in the corner. Just today I posted a new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon inspired art to the various places like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, and the latest one, Inkblot. There are way too many w social medias. <laughs> but yes, thank you very much for watching. And I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye, bye.